Hey guys, how's it going? Miguel here from CFS Recovery. Today's video, I'm bringing to you someone very special. He is uh, he's from South America. He has been dealing with CFS for about a year now. Um, hit him very hard. Very young guy, as you'll hear from the video. And his story is, is quite remarkable, his recovery journey. He is somebody who has been putting in lots and lots of work, has been very, very focused on recovery, following through on you know everything we asked of him to do and just really putting in the work. And it's a perfect example of somebody who's really been putting in the work. And it's an example of somebody who has gone from one extreme and started coming back to normalness, started getting his life back little by little. You'll hear from him yourself, the amount of things that he's went through just in the past year. I'll let him explain that for you. Now, at the time of this video, he is still recovering. He is still feeling some symptoms here and there, still having some adjustment periods. But to go from where he came from to where he is now, I think it's such a huge inspiration and it's why I wanted to create this video and share his story with you guys. So without further ado, I want to introduce to you Mitsuo. Hi guys, my name is Arthur Mitsuo Yohara. I'm currently 18 years old. I'm about to be 19 in one month, so I'm excited. I live in Brazil, Sao Paulo, big city, and that's it. Yeah, South America, first South American um, in the program. So obviously you have had quite a struggle with CFS. And I think you only realized it was CFS not too long ago, right? Because you got this last year, you're pretty healthy, normal young person. And then this kind of really just hit you, but maybe just share with everybody. How did this all start? How long ago did you start to develop these symptoms and what happened? How did you get it? So before the illness, I was applying for college in the U S I was studying in two different schools because I wanted to pass university in Brazil and they they are really difficult. So basically I was studying for 10 to 14 hours per day. I would sleep for four hours, five if I sleep. I would exercise or practice sports every day. I would help to do the cleaning at home. So this was my routine last year, which I was in my senior year of high school. And then 18th May, 2021, I suffered a surgery to fix my deviated septum on my nose. And since then I have chronic fatigue, but I didn't know it that. It was the only symptom for a long time. And also in September, they found out there, there was a located bacteria on my nose through surgery. And I took antibiotics for 28 days. I think this made a mess in my gut. 10 days after the shot, I was interned at the hospital. 16 days, actually. Yeah, I was in the hospital. I couldn't move. Sometimes I would be paralyzed for an hour. I was in the wheelchair. To go to the bathroom it was like a it was like a battle, you know? It would take me 10 minutes to go to the toilet. It was like bed and toilet. It was three seconds, but I needed help at the time. Yeah, no, really tough times. Uh, I remember that experience because here we call it intensive care unit. Essentially, when you stay overnight in a hospital and I know I had an IV hooked up to me, all these things, nurses were coming to check on me all the time. Every morning they wake you up at like 8.30 a.m. and then check your blood pressure, your heart rate. They ask you, what's your name? When's your birthday? Just to make sure you, <laughs> you are who you are. And then going to the bathroom was the hardest because it felt like you're doing a full workout essentially, but um, what were the symptoms that you felt that put you in the hospital? At that time, I think I had over 30 symptoms. I don't remember everything, but at that time, my gut health was okay. I could eat like stuff in the hospital and it's not that healthy, but I remember that I had fibromyalgia. My mom couldn't touch me. It was intense. Shortness of breath, joint pains, dizziness, post-exertional malaise, and pot symptoms, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then what did the doctors say? Because you had tons and tons of blood tests, right? What were they saying about all this? They thought it was like an autoimmune disease. I think I've done tons of specific exams, you know, um, and blood tests. I said it before. When I say tons, like there was this month, I got over 150 blood tests. And I'm not even exaggerating. I yeah. think my max was 33 on the same day. I've seen around 40 different doctors, but many said it was all in my head. Depression, anxiety. Um, I think when doctor doesn't know what is going on, they always say like, oh, it's in your head. Oh, you're faking all these symptoms. Sometimes mm -hmm. they wouldn't believe 
that I was actually ill, you know? That's one of the most frustrating things because I've heard that so many times. And most of the people watching this right now, like I've probably been told that as well. So it makes you feel like you're starting to go crazy, right? Because even though you feel the physical symptoms and they are there 1000%, they're not showing up on tests. So then you start to question, it's like, am I really going crazy? Cause I swear I feel this stuff. I'm not making it up. I know I'm not, there's no reason I would be, but the tests are also not detecting anything. So what the heck is going on? It leaves you really confused, right? And then the doctors, yes. When they don't find anything, most of them don't even know what CFS is or, or like hypersensitive nervous system issues. Never heard of it. This is not something they learn about in textbooks at school. So they tend to chase the symptom that's like, oh, you have lots of pain. Maybe you have multiple sclerosis. Let's do a MRI. Yeah. See if there's lesions I, on your spine yeah. or in your brain. For the time of this video, this was about a year ago, May 18th, right? That's when it all hit to you. And then after that, for the next several months, what was life like after you got discharged from the hospital? I didn't go to school for about a month and something. And I was worried about my grades and stuff because there, there would be exams, the final exams. And I was scared because I, I thought I, will, I was going to fail. And then my dad called the director of the school and he said, your grades are cool. You have always been a good student. So you will pass, no problem. You don't need to do the exams. You can come to school, just see your friends, hang out with them, pay attention to the class. And so I did that. Then I would go to school. Of course, I was tired. I was feeling a bunch of symptoms. But then when I arrived at home, I would be on bed the whole day. And that was it for the rest of the year. Yeah. You were still able to go to school, attend it, but they were very accommodating of you. Even then when they said, yeah, you don't have to keep up with all of this stuff. Even then you were still super tired and wiped out. Were you still feeling a lot of the pain then and headaches and all those other symptoms? Yeah, oh, of course, yeah. And brain fog, everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember, uh, you know, when you reached out to me and booked that call, we got on the phone. I remember the state you were in at that point, it was about I think it was March or April. I think it was April actually. So just two months ago, really, really just over two months ago. And you were in bed almost all day. You had trouble sitting up, lots of pot symptoms, and you could go outside the house here and there, but it, it was lots and lots of symptoms, right? So on my graduation day, I was using a cr crutch, a stick, you know, and at the end I collapsed uh, my body. Uh, wouldn't respond to me and this happened a couple of times so my friend who is 190 centi centimeters tall carried me to the car and there was this one time I went skating and my body stopped working at all again and my friend took me home we went by uber and he carried me too it's nice to be small and skinny because they can carry me but I was this bad February this year I have my prawn because we graduated. I wasn't going. I could barely walk. A lot of symptoms, but I went. And because I wanted to see my friends again. I thought it was the last time I was going to see my friends. It was too much for me. And one day I thanked my parents for everything that they have done. But I said, I can't do this anymore. I was done with life. I think I never seen my dad crying, not even his mother's funeral not even in his dad's funeral, but he was crying and he said like, please stay, don't go, you know, that broke my heart. So I decided that I would do anything possible to recover. And then I started my research. Before I think I did a video talking about my situation on my secondary Instagram, which I have not many followers, but mainly my friends. And I receive a lot of messages and these are inspiration, and motivation to keep going, you know? I think there's a point of recovery or there's a point of this illness. I think we don't do for ourselves, but for others. So anytime that I'm giving up, I always read my the message from my friends. And okay, I think I'm not thinking properly. And in a year, six months, I don't know, I'll be fully recovered. And this will be just a bad dream, yeah. That's yeah. it. That's powerful, man. And this is the first time I'm hearing about that story too. It's moments like those that you never forget. And those are moments in your life when it's like a fork in the road. You can either 
to give up there or, or just say tired of doing this or it's like no this is what will take me to the next level and you're absolutely right sometimes you get we get to a certain point in life where things are so bad that the only reason you continue trying is for the people around you you don't want to let them down because of all the effort they've put into you and you know i'm really glad you found my channel and got on the right path and things are so much better now because this that was only six months ago right it was this year where you felt that stuff yeah it was this year february yeah Oh yeah, yeah. So not too long ago, like four months ago, right? So the mindset then was wanting to give up and now you're able to function. Like you watched Top Gun yesterday and that's a very stimulating movie, action movie, planes falling out of the sky. Or <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, but it's crazy, man. It's crazy how much can change in such a short period of time. And the biggest thing I always tell people, it's like, don't give up, don't give up. Don't lose hope. And there are times when you feel like you're losing hope, but there's like that little 0.001% chance of you that still believes you will have a future. And that's what you have to hold on to. And if you can hold on to that and just get through the tough times and then find a program like this or any other program, anything that works for you, it'll all be worth it. At the end of the day, it will all be worth it. I promise you. Yeah, man, I appreciate you sharing that story. And it's been great hearing all of this from you and seeing how your life has changed. I remember our first call, the very first, one of the very first things he said was, if I ever got better, I want to inspire other people. And literally right now, as people are watching this, you're inspiring them. So it's so awesome to see. And um, it's been an honor being part of the journey so far. We still have some ways to go, but it's been a real pleasure watching you progress. That's what gets me excited and gets me out of bed in the morning. Some days I'm tired too. I like so many videos to do, lots of calls, but then I see the wins channel and I see, oh, I did this and this. And it's just so inspiring to see you guys crushing it. It's one of the most fulfilling things ever. I was uh, actually, I was seeking for this interview before I applied to this program, you know? I was, I'll, I'll be this, in, I'll be there. Here we are. I don't know why, but yeah, I'm here. <laughs> in the blink of an eye, in the blink of an eye, you're here. I gave up yeah. on medical appointments uh, and then I started watching YouTube videos. I would watch podcasts, interviews, and then I found your channel and I applied on the next yeah. day, I think. Oh, so it was yeah. almost like almost immediately. Do you remember the specific video that you watched that was like, oh, this clicks? Um, I think it was the brain retraining for pain mm -hmm. because I was feeling um, a lot of pain. And then I, I think I watched Junior's interview. I think mm. it was my second video. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. And um, it's been a crazy journey since. And what made you decide to apply for this program versus other people in the space or work with other people in the space? Because there's quite a few people online, but what made you reach out to me? And uh, why did you want to try this program? Um, okay. So when I realized that no doctor would find out what was going on with me, I got terrified. I said, this is it. So I would ask why my exams are coming normal if I'm feeling all these symptoms. And I was hoping to come coming wrong, you know, um, it could be cancer, it could be anything. I would be happy because at least I could start a treatment, you know, but nothing. So February from this year, I started my research, my own research, because no doctors couldn't find out. Um, I made a list of all the autoimmune diseases uh, and other diseases that could be, might be. And after a while, I started researching in, in German and English because there was actually nothing here in Brazil. And I found out what my problem was. Obviously, it was hypothetical, but it was more accurate than any doctor. I was happy because I found the answer and I could tell a doctor, but it didn't make a difference. Sometimes the doctor would say like, oh, um, you're not feeling all these symptoms, you know? Um, CFS, this it's not like CFS. My parents bought two other programs, but it's like you do by yourself. There's no guide. There's no person explaining stuff for you. It's like they have everything there, but you need to do by yourself. So the difference about this program is that we have access to you and yeah, and the calls. I, I was hoping to, to meet other people uh, with this disease because I, I was terrified, you know? And to have someone who understand me, I think it's important um, on recovery. Mm -hmm, totally. That's one thing I wanted to make sure with this program is that people get the hands-on help they need, make sure that it's not cookie cutter, that we actually are there with you doing it versus, okay, signed up, here's a bunch of videos, go watch them, 
good luck. Because I was in that place before too, where like I needed hands-on help. Luckily for me, I got it from my doctor. But if he had just told me, oh, do this, this, and this, and this, and this, okay, good luck. Then it wouldn't have worked because I needed that like extra support. So, you know, if you had to choose your top three favorite things about Recovery Jumpstart, what would you say it is? You kind of just mentioned it with, with some of the things, but you know, what would you say those three things are? Yeah, the first thing I already said, I think it's the access to you. The program is six weeks, but after the six weeks, you can message me, yell anytime you want. So this is uh, really good for us. Second, I would say the wins channel. I think the wins um, inspire us to keep going. You know, sometimes we have uh, we are in an awful day, and then we we see message like, oh, today I walked with my dog and ate a cookie. It's simple, but for us, it's, it's a huge improvement. The wins channel, it's yeah, really important for me. I would say the calls, which are in group. I think as we are restricted socializing, this is our social event for now. And I couldn't see my friends as much as I wanted. So the calls will make my day. We human beings uh, need human contact. And we CFS people, I think we miss that human contact. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And um, human interaction is so important because we just don't have energy to go out. And sometimes even if friends come over, if we're very sensitive, even just trying to keep up a conversation in person is it's difficult. So in the beginning, was there a little bit of fear of being able to keep up with the calls when you first joined? Yes, because first thing first is another language. I have anxiety like speaking in front of people but people there were so nice. I had hot symptoms, I still have, but at that time I, I was feeling awful. I couldn't be sitting in this chair, for example. And yeah, so I was feeling awful in the first week, but after a while, it was okay. What would you say is different now than before you joined, like mentally, physically, emotionally? Because two months ago, like when you started, life was very different for you because going back to what I mentioned earlier, when we first talked in April, two months ago, you could barely sit up. I remember the, the first week, your win was being able to sit up for 30 minutes and eat dinner with your family. And that was the win for you. Yeah. And then compared to the stuff you were doing even just a couple of weeks ago, you know, kind of just paint that picture. What can you do now that you couldn't do a couple months ago? Okay, so when I first started the program, I would be in bed 95. 98% of the time. As I said, I couldn't be upright, so no sitting. Panic attacks 24 seven. And my panic attacks were so bad, I would hit my, my head on the wall to stop the talk because I was getting crazy. And I literally broke my wardrobe punching it. And I'm not this kind of person who gets angry and hits everything. Eating increased my symptoms to seven to nine out of 10 yesterday. I went to the cinema, I watched Top Gun, Maverick, Tom Cruise movie, you know, super intense movie, the whole movie. I think my nervous system handled pretty well. I guess I'm more able to do like daily things like walk through my house. I'm no longer the whole day in my bed, on my bed. Maybe just share where you were last week or two weeks ago when you went on that like little mini vacation to that beach watching the sunset and everything oh. and the stars that must have been epic right so tell us a little bit about that so i went to to the beach with my family just to rest a little bit it's beautiful there and then it was sunset and it was almost ending up and i oh i need to catch up this the sunset and then i i went running and then i sat on the on the sand you know and i was watching the sky it was red orange purple and there were stars in the sky. It was a unique moment. I thank everything that I passed through, you know, that I was alive. I had my legs functioning, even though I was feeling symptoms. And yeah, of course I was feeling symptoms, but I was happy. I didn't tell you this, but actually on the day before, I went to favela, Brazil yeah. favela. It was a crazy experience. I met some people there. Yeah, it was a nice day. I did. A lot of stuff and then i i enter in this adjustment period thick adjustment period but you you say like oh just chill and the stuff and i yeah i'm okay now yeah that's awesome man and for you 
what were like the biggest things that helped you make your way out of this? What helped you deal with the symptoms? And what do you think some of the biggest things that helped get to you where you are now versus two months ago? First, I would say your guide, you know, uh, I think it's important to have a human guiding you. I would say the science behind all this stuff, the nervous system disorder, I need the science behind this stuff because I'm really skeptical and maybe... Yeah, like maybe um, share how you deal with symptoms because you're actually really good at it. I think why you've gotten such good results is because you did it relentlessly. Like throughout the day, you were always reminding yourself it's just a nervous system, it's just a nervous system. When you were feeling like the anxiety coming on really bad, then you would <clears throat> you'd message us and we'd help you out. You were applying the principles as much as you could. Maybe touch on that. Like, how were you dealing with the symptoms and all these like, thoughts and worries that were coming up? Um, during the day, I'm always doing the brain retraining because I have symptoms 24 seven. So it's easy to do the brain retraining because I have symptoms. And then even when I go sleep, when we are calm, we feel more symptoms maybe because uh, we don't notice when we are doing stuff. And I'm doing the brain retraining before sleeping. I think there's no time to be sad. Of course, it's difficult, but I, I guess there's no way to get out without brain retraining to be indifferent as possible. I'm not saying that it's easy. There are some awful days, but yeah, I reach Miguel, reach out Miguel, Junior's there too. There's also people from the group, Christoph, shout out to Joe too. Yeah, we are not alone. But when we are alone, I guess we need to do the brain retraining uh, as much as possible. And then when you say that, the, like the brain retraining, roughly how many times were you doing it per day? Because I always tell people like, you're probably not doing enough. Even if you think you are, you're probably not doing enough. So how many times would you say that? Is it dozens? Is it hundreds? Is it like a thousand? I think a thousand. I think I'm not exaggerating because yeah, totally. yeah I used to have panic attack 24 seven. So uh, it was the whole day. Now it's much easier to deal with the symptoms. So when, I don't know, a bad thought pop up, I just swipe and be indifferent as possible. But I think it's constant, you know? I think now it's easier um, because the symptoms are decreasing. But yeah, adjustment periods are uh, tough. Yeah, they're always <laughs> tough. They're always tough. And um, yeah, so for you thrivers who are watching this right now, like I said before, you have to do it hundreds of times per day, if not like a thousand times per day, when a negative thought comes in, a worry, a doubt, a fear, you have to be indifferent to it and acknowledge it, but don't buy into it. Yeah. Continue doing what you're doing. Be indifferent, as indifferent as possible. And you also have to do brain training for chronic pain if you have lots of pain. And it's something that in the beginning, it occupies a lot of your day because you do feel symptoms 24 seven and they're very strong. So you have to challenge all of those things. And it's, it's very hard, right? It's not easy. Imagine doing that a thousand times a day, day after day. It's very hard work, but it's so worth it. It is worth the payoff in the end. You heard it from him. That's how Mitsuo has been getting a lot of really, really good results. Very hard work, but um, very worth it. So Mitsuo, what would you say to someone who's sitting on the fence and wanting to join a program like this, but they're afraid they're not sure if it's going to work? What would you say to them if someone was in your shoes and they're afraid? I think don't believe that you can't recover. I'm not saying that is easy. It's still difficult for me, but I guess there will always be doubts on recovery path. And Miguel is there for you. That's why the whole program exists. This illness is actually a gift. Probably you were suffering your whole life and you didn't know that. I'm not fully recovered. I think I still have a long way to go, but I'm not close to 0% anymore. Better days are coming for sure. I need to remind me this every single day. It's cool because you've been seeing lots of glimpses of normalness. Like when you were able to play soccer for a few minutes at a time, that's a crazy jump from where you were before. Just, just to be able to walk around, let alone run around, let alone be in a competitive environment where you can play. I thought that was, that was pretty wild but it's a result of all the work you've been putting in. Uh, my last question is, so far, would you say it has been a good investment to join this program? Basically, my parents spent over 70,000, which is a lot of money in Brazil, in the United States too. I, as I said, I've seen around 40 different doctors, lots of specific exams. This is actually cheap, like real cheap, and this will lead to recover. So 
I guess if I could, I would give more, you know, all this money that I spent, like the 70,000, I would give to you, you know, because none of that stuff that I did worked. So I think it's totally worth it, you know, really cheap. Yeah, I remember on the application when I saw how much you put down, how much have you spent in the past? It was 70,000. I was like, what? No, this can't be right. So I searched it up converted it. I'm like, that's a lot of freaking money. Is there anything else you want to share with people who are a few steps behind you stuck, don't really know what's going on and could use some motivation? Do you have any words of inspiration for them? Any advice you want to give? So as we were living in a pandemic, there was no football training at school. And when the training session was back again, I think it was November, um, the coach called me to play. My arm was pierced with the medical access hole to enter the medication. No? or vitamins without sticking me again. So I went, played for 10 minutes, scored one goal and made an assist. And that was it. I couldn't do more than that. And when I arrived at home, I fell. I stayed on the floor for three hours. I couldn't stand up. My parents were working. I couldn't beg for help. I stayed on the floor for about three hours. I would punch and scream to my legs. No, come on obey me, you are my legs, please come on. And that day, I really thought it was my last football game and I was, I would lose my legs and the rest of my body eventually. I think we all get this, right? Like people who get CFS, it's scary when the body doesn't respond anymore. Sounds like it was like a major crash or something like that. You just felt paralyzed, lots of pain, symptoms flaring up, shortness of breath, all of those things. So it was just 10 minutes of soccer and or football and that just took you out. So you're three hours on the ground, just helpless. And then your parents were at work, so they couldn't help you. Scary, man. I feel like all of us have a handful of times that we can think of, of like the worst, absolute worst crashes. And they're very scary because it feels like you're about to die. It really feels like that. Your body just shutting down, nervous system doesn't know what to do. And when it gets to that stage, even with positive thinking or anything like that, it, it's not going to save you. It's just a matter of waiting that period out. So very scary. And, and when was that? November last year. Yeah. November. Yeah. Here we are now. You're in a much better place. And uh, you actually just played, what is it, 12 minutes of soccer a few weeks ago, right? Was it eight or 12 minutes, something like that? Sunday, I played an hour. Really? I, I think it was an hour and I stayed like sitting and watching my friends playing for a little bit more. I think it was an hour. Of course, I felt symptoms. I needed to go to home earlier, but yeah, an hour. And obviously that's not running the entire time, but every now and then it's chasing the ball, kicking it. So that is crazy. Just for reference for everybody watching this, usually it takes a bit longer than this. Like you won't go from bedridden to playing soccer in two months but you can make a ton of progress. It, there's a lot of factors that come into it, like how you got sick, how long you've been sick, how much are you brain retraining, but you, you can definitely get to a better place than where you are right now. Totally. Cause uh, I've been at rock bottom. I've built myself back up. Mitsuo is building himself back up and you heard it from him. He seen over 40 doctors, specialists, tons and tons of blood tests. And I'll, I'll pop up a picture again, right over here. It's just crazy to see what you've been through, man. And for such a young guy to go through it at that level, it's going to give you a new perspective on life. And it's, it is kind of a gift, just like you said, because you're going to be able to look at life differently and have a new appreciation for everything that most people usually don't experience until they're a lot older or something very tragic happens. You've experienced that early and you, you're coming out of it now. So it is like kind of a gift. You've experienced life on the very low spectrum, lots of suffering and pain, but what comes after this is it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be a lot of gratitude, appreciation for everything because you've been in those darkest areas. So it's exciting to see where you're going to be six months from now and a year. I think you're going to have a totally different life. It's been great hearing all of this from you and seeing how your life has changed. And literally right now, as people are watching this, you're inspiring them. So it's so awesome to see. It's been an honor being part of the journey so far. We still have some ways to go, but it's been a real pleasure watching you, um, you know, watching you progress. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Keep in mind that recovery doesn't always happen this fast, but it's just an example of the big changes that can happen. Obviously, like I mentioned before, he's still recovering. 
He's still feeling some symptoms here and there, having some adjustment periods. But to go from where he was a couple months ago to now, which is essentially at the time of this recording, is exactly two months after he joined the program. It's just uh, a testament to how much you can accomplish in a relatively short amount of time if you just follow the path to recovery. So I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did want some extra help and wanted to join this community of thrivers and really just get extra hands-on help, then make sure to click the link down below. You can apply for the program. It's on an application basis and we can see if you're a good fit for the program. We want people who are ready for change, who are capable of change, and people who are ready to take their recovery to the next level. Remember, you are just one mind shift away from living life with thriving health. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll see you in the next video.